Do you ever think that your Harley Davidson motorcycle is just a bit too weak for you? Are you put off by the weaknesses, the scaremongering, and basically its limitations? Catch you inside. Revelator L. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. Hope you're all well in these testing times. So this video is all about the Harley Davidson motorcycle. It could be the Tourer, it could be the Softtails, it could be a sports, it could be anyone that you've thought of, anyone that you've ridden, anyone that you've owned. Before you bought it, did you hear the scare stories? Did you hear about all the weaknesses of a Harley Davidson, let's say, of uh, your particular bike? Did it stop you from buying it? Did you have any reservations before you bought it? Were all your friends trying to say, don't buy it, it's just too agricultural, it's a tractor, don't buy it, but you went ahead anyway. And did you regret buying it? That's the key thing. Now, if you go online and watch YouTube videos or you read blogs, uh, there's a lot of people out there who would put down the Harley Davidson for all its weaknesses. Yes, everybody keeps on going on about the brakes, how bad the brakes are on Harley Davidsons. What about, oh, they can't go around corners? Oh, they're just uh, terrible suspension. All the engines are always breaking. It's old technology. The, the list of hate is endless. But let me just address a few issues for you. And there may be some ways to overcome that weakness because there are some weaknesses and we have to acknowledge that. So first of all, let's talk about some of the things that are not really covered under warranty or you might struggle to make a warranty claim on. And these are things like tires, okay? Uh, well, that's for any motorcycle, of course, or any vehicle. Clutch is another one. A Harley Davidson won't cover. Any part of your braking system, the chances are you might struggle, especially with the consumable parts. Now the clutch is one of those things that lots of people buy in a Harley Davidson think, well, that, that should be covered under warranty. And on the face of it, it really should. But also we got to acknowledge how you ride your motorcycle as well. And there have been reports where dealerships have refused to even engage with riders uh, after they've had to change their clutch. And then, let's say a month later or a couple of months later, let's say a thousand miles later, the, the new clutch that they had fitted, that also breaks. And they still try and blame the rider. Now, this is an interesting one because you've got to look at the way you're riding, how aggressive you are on the throttle, and how you operate the clutch. Do you have it all the way out at the stoplight? Do you have it all the way in? Or do you just hold it on the bike mark? So if you're riding in a way that's gonna burn out the clutch, you're gonna burn it out. But if you're burning out a clutch after a thousand miles, regardless of how you're riding it, the chances are it's a fault with the clutch. It's not your riding. The same with the braking system. If you're going through pads really quickly, uh, let's say, or if you're warping discs, then it might be a case that it's just the way you're riding that has caused an issue. But at the same time, there also could be an issue with the brake pads and with the discs itself. So it's worth investigating. Lots of the problems with Harley-Davidson's, or let's say lots of the weaknesses, the perceived weaknesses, can be overcome by just easing off on the way you ride them. Handle them with kick gloves a little bit. Now, if you want to be more aggressive, if you want to turn on the throttle a little bit more, then actually you might want to think about investing in upgrading your clutch first of all. Let's say upgrading your braking system. The thing with any motorcycle was that you kind of need to keep on top of it. You need to develop that, that keen eye, that keen sense of what's going on with a motorcycle, how it's riding, how it isn't riding. You're the owner of it, so you'll be best placed to find out if it's riding right or not. 
So that's really about tire pressures, wheel alignment, belt tension, all these things that need constant adjustment, constant assessment. You have to be vigilant. You have to be engaged with what you're riding. Tires, lots of people will go on about the length of tires and some will wear down really quickly and others will seem to last a long time. It's really hard to say which is a good tire or a bad tire in terms of wear performance because it really depends how you ride and it also depends on the surfaces on which you ride as well. Harley-Davidson in particular seems to attract a lot of derision from people out there and most notably on its engines. There's always people out there saying how bad these engines are, how, how badly they perform, they're always breaking down, there's an engine leaks, so you have to upgrade things left, right and centre just to make them go properly. There is some element of truth in that, there's no doubt. That's why there wouldn't be such a big thing about upstaging them, trying to get them to perform better, perform faster, rev a little bit more, all that kind of stuff. All those power figures that everybody keeps on going on about. But like everything in life, there has to be a balance. You have to taper what you really want out of the machine to what it can actually give you. Quite often, what people find is that they concentrate, they focus on one aspect of their motorcycle, let's say the engine, but they don't really pay attention to the rest of the bike, let's say suspension or braking. Now, I'm not saying you should ride your motorcycle as if you're about to retire, uh, far from it. But what I'm saying is that there are ways in which you can prolong the life of your tires just by not being so aggressive on the acceleration and also on the braking and how much you lean into a bend. The same can be said about braking. Don't be too hard of the braking. Uh, think long ahead. Give yourself lots of time and space between yourself and other vehicles. That enables you to slow down with ease and also have less demand of your braking system. Same with the clutch, don't be so aggressive with the throttle and also with the clutch engagement and disengagement. Harley-Davidson's, for the most part, are known for being road vehicles, touring vehicles, uh, let's say cruising bikes. But that doesn't mean that you can only ride those bikes on those kind of surfaces, on those kinds of journeys. Crikey, you can ride your Harleys anywhere and I mean anywhere. Off-road, on-road, on sand, on pebbles, whatever. You, you can ride them anywhere. I'm not saying you won't fall off. I'm not saying you won't cause a bit of damage, but they are a machine and they are capable of riding over most surfaces. One of the key criticisms of Harley-Davidson's is that they may tend to rust prematurely. Well, the way you overcome premature rusting on a Harley-Davidson, uh, especially, but any motorcycle this is, uh, is regular washing. Regular washing, and if you're gonna ride your motorcycle all year round where there might be a lot of chemicals and salts on the road, then cover it in a moisture repellent and a anti-corrosive, let's say, something like an ACF 50 during those months where you're going to encounter those kind of conditions. But regular washing, that's what you need to focus on. Just factor in the conditions in which you're going to ride and then prepare the bike accordingly. Prepare the bike how you want to ride it. If you're going to be a really aggressive rider and you're going to do lots of upstaging to your engine, now you also need to upgrade your clutch. You might want to consider upgrading your compensator as well. You also might want to think about upgrading your, your braking system and also your suspension as well. So there's lots of things to consider when you talk about improving the performance of your bike. You have to think of it as a whole. And also, when you're thinking about the general weaknesses or the perceived weaknesses of that bike, you need to come up with other strategies so those weaknesses aren't really knocking on the door and waiting to trip you up, let's say. 
you're ready for them and there you can keep them in hand so you don't necessarily have to go out straight away and start buying performance parts upgrade parts all it depends is how you ride your bike and if you can ride it within the limits of the motorcycle it should last you a very very long time even if it is a harley davidson oh yeah let us know your thoughts on this. Let us know about the weaknesses of Harley Davidson. Let us know what your weaknesses are on your particular bike, or what are your bike's weaknesses, I should say, and what you've done to overcome that. Have you upgraded the parts, or have you just changed the way you ride a little bit? I certainly have changed the way I ride my Harley Davidson from previous bikes, no doubt, but have you? Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, like and share, check out the website revelatoralf.com and I'll catch you again on another video coming very soon. Check the website for the content creator course and the members area. Lots of exclusive videos there just for you. Right, catch you again. Ta-da.